This is another camouflage test video, this time carried out in an abandoned quarry in the woodland nearby. The abandoned quarry is quite good because it means you get sort of a more arid environment to test deserty type camouflages out, as well as the regular wooden camouflages. So I didn't take loads of pictures this time because we just wanted to test the camouflages and how well they worked in kind of both the woods and the arid environment. And in this video we used the Czechoslovakian version of raindrop camouflage the East German raindrop camouflage known as Strictarn, as well as British Woodland DPM and Flectarn. Uh, all of the shots had me wearing multiple train pattern or MTP trousers, which is the British version of Multicam, and they worked exceptionally well in these tests, so let's go through them now. So first the Czech raindrop coat. As you can see, the colour doesn't really match the environment at all. This camouflage is interesting because it does have a very good infrared camouflage layer under the main pattern, but you won't see that of a regular camera. As usual, the MTP trousers and the Autumn Camouflage hood seem to work quite well here, but the actual coat's pattern is not disruptive enough for what we want here, and the colour isn't quite right. Now for the East German version of the Raindrop Camouflage. Now, the colours on this are very good, as it always seems to pick up ambient light well, like a multi-cam does. However, the issue is with the East German one, as the same as with the Czechoslovakian version, it doesn't really have a very good disruptive pattern on it. So the further you get away from it, the more and more it actually just looks like a brown blob. However, it is the right colour for the environment at least. As you can see, the trousers work a lot better. Now for British 95 Woodland DPM. Although it's not the right colours for the environment, at least having a disruptive pattern material camouflage pattern on it made it work very well when it gets to a distance, at least being disruptive of the human form. But however, as said, the colours are too dark, uh, being woodland colours for this sort of sandy area. As you can see, it's not as obvious as some of the other camouflages because it makes the torso less obvious. Now for German Flecktarn. Now this is one of my favourite camouflage patterns ever and it works surprisingly well here. The colours like the Woodland DPM aren't quite right for the environment but as you get further and further out, the disruptive pattern actually begins to work fairly well and despite the colours not being quite right, it does become surprisingly hard to see. So good point to the Flecktarn here. If it was in an MTP style colour it would be even better, but for what it is it works considerably well. Now in these two pictures I'm just knelt down, one with the Flectarn on and one with the Strictarn on. In both of these it actually works fairly well because my shape's less obvious. However, the Flectarn I'd say works better simply because the disruptive pattern means there's not a brown blob in one area where I've got a plain coloured shirt on. Now for some pictures inside a tree line in some very light woodland, and you can see here that the Czech camouflage does a lot better than when it's against sandy coloured things. However, it's still not brilliant, it's still a bit too grey. Further out it's better, but again the MTP trousers win the show here. Now again for the Strictarn, again colour wise it works really well here, the issue being again it's not disruptive enough. So as it starts moving out further and further, it still seems like there's a big brown blob here. Now, if there was a big tree trunk behind me, or in front of me in this picture, then yes, the strict arm would work a lot better, but the MTP trousers, again, actually disrupt my legs, making them harder to see as a big blob, whereas the shirt doesn't quite work out like that. Now for British Woodland 95 DPM. Unsurprisingly, this works very well in actual woodland, being a British Woodland camouflage. As you zoom further and further out, the disruptive pattern, coupled with the very similar colours to the environment, works really well. And once you're fully zoomed out, it's almost impossible to see. Once you zoom back in, again, it's not an obvious camouflage that stands out. Now, the Flecton is a bit too dark for this environment, but it still works surprisingly well here. As you get further and further away from it, the disruptive pattern really does its job. And despite the hue not being quite right, it's not really obvious anybody's standing there at all, even zoomed in. Now I'm crouched down in the same place in all three of these pictures, wearing first the Strictarn, then the British Woodland Camouflage, and then the Flectarn. And you'll see with all of these that once you're actually in a fairly good concealed position, the camouflage patterns all work fairly well. Even the Strictarn without a disruptive pattern on isn't obvious once you crouch down. Here's the Woodland 95, and you can see with this one that this is really effective now. When we zoom in, it's hard to actually see that there's somebody there at all. This looks kind of like a mossy sort of hill or something. And then, the last of all, we have the uh, Flecton, which again, once you zoom in, it's really not obvious somebody's there because the disruptive pattern does a very good job combined with the colours of making it not obvious that that's a human shape. 
And this is just one final test with the Czechoslovakian version of the raindrop camo, just to see if it would work well with some grey and greenish branches around it from various distances. Again, it's still a bit too pale and obvious. I don't know if there's anywhere this camo particularly shines, but again, it's probably just an all-round okay camouflage when it was made, but it does have that very interesting IR layer. But from all these tests, we can establish that the multi-terrain pattern trousers worked really, really well, as in the older camouflage tests. So what I've actually done now is purchased an MTP uh, shirt. So when I do future camo tests, I can actually just try, try doing an entirely MTP-based video and see how well that works because I think it really does seem to shine as a modern camouflage.